Welcome to my review of IPv6 Fundamentals. Here we're doing Chapter 11, IPv6 Routing Tables and Static Routes. Again, all of this information was prepared by Rick Graziani. All PowerPoints, all material, all credit is goes to him. Again, we're doing the IPv6 Fundamentals book. And these are the IPv6 Fundamentals written by Rick Graziani. The appropriate ISBN number for both his videos and his book. Again, all credit goes to him. Alright, so let's go ahead and jump right in. Let's talk about 11.1, enabling the IPv6 router. So a router not enabled as an IPv6 router is just a router operating at layer or at IPv version 4. So you have to be able to, first of all, enable IPv6 and then configure IPv6. So part of that is configuring the appropriate IPv6 addresses and the appropriate multicast addresses, things like the FF02 all, uh, all IPv6 devices or the other multicast type addresses outlined in a previous chapter. For example, we had the IPv6 router uh, multicast group. So an IPv6 router, same as a non-IPv6 router, until you issue the IPv6 unicast routing command. Once you do that, it is then a IPv6 router. It will become a member of all IPv6 routers multicast group, and you'll notice that becomes the FF02 colon colon 2. So that takes it from an all IPv6 devices and then includes the all IPv6 router address. Because again, with IPv6, you're going to end up with multiple addresses. So all of these addresses are on that interface. Now, again, these are multicast addresses. So other devices are also going to respond to the two FF addresses. But the FE80 colon colon 1 and the global unicast address 2001 db8 dot 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 both those addresses are on that particular interface for that link the global unicast is going to be globally but the fe80 is going to be that link local address this will send icmpv6 ra messages and can enable ipv6 routing protocols RIPNG, OSPF, AIGRP, 4IPv6. So we talked about RIPNG. We're going to talk a little bit more about OSPF v3 and AIGRP for IPv6 and their following two chapters. Since we have two chapters remaining and one of them about, is about OSPF v3 and one of them is about AIGRP for IPv6. Also, we're going to talk about the forwarding of the IPv6 router or the forwarding of IPv6 packets, transiting the router, going through the router. So again, non-IPv6 enabled router. You can set the addresses, because unlike IPv4, a router must be configured with to be an IPv6 router. Just because you give it the addresses doesn't mean it's going to process IPv6 routing protocols. If you try to do like a, a router EIGRP or a router OSPF for IPv6, it may not work. If it doesn't work, that's because you must turn on the IPv6 unicast routing. Because again, if you are just doing a non-IPv6 router and you do a show interface, you're going to see the appropriate FF02 colon colon one addresses, meaning that's part of the IPv6 all devices. You notice you don't see FF02 colon colon two, and that's going to be all of the IPv6 routers. So again, these are the multicast addresses, but you don't see that FF02 colon colon two. IPv6 routers will send the appropriate ICMP RA message out its interfaces. But again, you notice here 
there is no neighbor discovery route advertisement. Again, IPv6 unicast routing that enables the processing of IPv6 and IPv6 routing protocols. Without that, nothing really works. So once you do that, you have an IPv6 router and you'll end up with the appropriate multicast addresses. As you'll notice here, we have a multicast address of FF02 colon colon 2. That allows for the ICMPv6 to actually function. Once you do that, you can start seeing the router advertisements for neighbor discovery. But without that command issued, that will not be there. Because again, router uh, advertisement messages have to be there in order for neighbor discovery process to function. But you only get those once IPv6 unicast routing is enabled. If you don't do anything else with it, we're going to be using the default Slack. Once you also did IPv6 unicast routing, you can set routing protocols. You can see that there's no error messages. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the routing table. So let's go ahead and do a show IPv6 route. And there's our routing table. Again, with uh, the appropriate codes and all of the output that we need, we can see what's directly connected, what's locally connected. Again, connected routes should be C. There we go. All of this should be pretty straightforward. I mean, you've seen a writing table before. The administrative distance and metric is zero, 00. We mean it's directly connected. We have our local connected devices. Local routes are a slash 128 route. It's a host route for the router. It's a unicast address. It allows the router to more efficiently process packets directly to the router itself rather than for packet forwarding. Packets to itself, again, more efficient. Again, you'll notice that it's a slash 128. It's basically not a loopback address, but a hey, here is a local interface. Look back at myself. And you'll notice it even gives itself a interface and a receive portion. You'll notice the colon one, which it actually is the loopback address. And then we have a FF00, which is also a local address. By default, multicast packets are forwarded. Sorry, by default, multicast packets, the FF00, they're not specifically forwarded out. Any more specific multicast addresses would take precedence. FF05 colon colon one through or one three, that's a DHCP server, that take precedence. So IPv6 multicast routing would have to be configured and turned on. A link local multi a link local multicast address will never be forwarded out of that specific link. Alright, so let's go ahead and talk about static routes and the express forwarding. So again, we've already talked about the IPv6 prefix and all of the additional commands. So we're doing a static route just like with IPv4, IP route, the prefix, sorry, the IPv6 prefix, the prefix length, and or the exit interface and or IP address for next hop. Again, just like a static route in IPv4, what network do you want to match? Which one do you want to forward it to? Or what interface do you want to forward it out? So for example, turn on IPv6 unicast routing. 
you can have it match this network and send it to that destination. Or you can do an exit interface. Here we have a static route. We can look at it. You'll notice the S for static. It will be sent. This guy will match and will be sent there via that guy. You'll notice the administrative distance is 1. We can uh, have it forward it to, again, multiple addresses. Here we have the cafe to 2. And then we can have that also forward back to 2, 2. And 3 forward to 2, 2. And so forth. Which that's not the best way to do it, but I mean it is a nice matching way to, to verify. Shabby static route, you can again see all of them and they're all pointing back to the same address. Options to reduce this would be the summarization or a default static route. Just like with IPv6, uh, IPv4, you always have the specialized zero address. Alright, so here's that express forwarding. Instead of actually listing the address for the next hop, you can say this address, send out this interface. Let me get my pin. If a packet coming in matching this address is received, send out that interface. Again, unicast writing has to be enabled, but that's how you'd send it out. Because CEH, sorry, CEF takes care of any recursive lookups issues, it is best to use the next hop address instead of the exit interface, but that's not always the case. Next hop addresses and exit interfaces should still be used on broadcast networks such as Ethernet. So let's go ahead and look at some more notes on CEF. It is forwarding mechanism to optimize the layer 3 and layer 2 lookup process into a single process. IPCEF. You can turn off IPCEF and turn on IPv6 or vice versa. IP4 is turned on by default. IPv6 is turned off by default. Again, you can turn them on and off based off of your whim. You can do a show IPCEF and that will show you the next hop and or interface. If you want to see the IPv6 version of it, it will be show IPv6 CEF. But you'll notice if you did that without this being turned on, it's not running. Alright, so let's go ahead and talk about enabling it. On the user exec mode, it's just IPv6 CEF turned it on. If you had the no in front of it, turned it off. It's now enabled. So I mean, again, you can play with that and vice versa. So now you can do your show IPv6 CEF and you should be able to see the default route. You may need to enable, again, the CEF for IPv6 because it's disabled by default. Again, that's how you do it. But you notice, oh, actually, you do show commands from the early exec. You have to force the enable on the global configuration. I did misspoke earlier here. <coughs> To turn this on, you have to do it from our global configuration. That's right. To do the show commands for it, it has to be the user exec. Prior to iOS 15, you may, do, you, you may have had to use the IPv6 unicast routing command first, but post-15, that command will work. 
I believe this is going to be almost the last. No, there should be two more. 11.4 IPv6 summary static routes. Okay. So again, you can always uh, uh, summarize static routes. Here we have five common routes. You can summarize them all into one. You can summarize them. Here we go. You'll notice this is common between all of them. So starting with the leftmost bits, identify where we already did that. If we break them down into binary, because I just did the hexadecimal, which if we would have done just hexadecimal, the line was there. But you'll see that once you break it down into binary, the line should go one more bit to the right. So if you ever wonder why you need to be able to go back and forth between binary and hexadecimal, that's a great example. So again, red is going to be what's common, blue is not common. So the summarized address will be again in red, or you'll be all of those plus these 13 bits give us a total of 61 bits. So our summarized address should be 2001 0 db8 feed 0 colon colon slash 61 because we've summarized it though again they will summarize that this will also let us use 6 and 7 because we can still do 1 because we've used 101 so these three bits can stay in play and they can transition to 110 or 111 so 6 and 7 and they'll still be within that summarized address so add the zeros so again we're still calculating it out there you go different variations to show what they are so configuring the summarized address, you turn off all of the uh, routes, and you can summarize it. And then send it to the next IP, or the next hops IP, or next, or the exit interface. You can look at static routes, you will see the, again, the summarized address. You can ping it and you should see that it works. Alright, let's go ahead and talk about how we set our default static route. This is our last topic. IPv route 0. Match any IP with any subnet. Send it out either the exit interface or the next top IP address. Again, that's IPv4. With IPv6, Pretty much the same thing. All zero prefix with any subnets. So here again, we can turn off our default route. Here's our summarized address. Send it to that interface. And then we can say, forward everything to that guy. Uh, there are some issues with that because here we are actually looking for specific packets. This one we're for everything, so got to be careful with the zeros. That gets back into your knowledge of the default route, so we're not going to go there. To verify it, you can always do a show, and there is our static route for our show command. If we ping it, it should work. And that's it for this chapter. Again, all of this was off of the Rick Graziani's IPv6 Fundamentals book. All of this credit goes to Rick Graziani. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you.